seated in his presence. Uh, those of you who have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Job, chapter 23, Job 23, and uh, we're going to be looking at verses 6 through 10 in the Amplified Version. I love this particular book, Minister Jones, because Job talks about the test of life. And these New Testament believers somehow feel that you're going to escape tests, but that just is not scriptural. It tells us how to deal with the tests. Amen. Job chapter 23, verses 6 through 10. While you're turning there, I'm going to pray, Father, we thank you for the word of the living God. Thank you that the word is life, and it causes us to have, uh, this, it causes us to have strength in every area of our life. We bind the enemy from trying to snatch away the understanding from God's people. And we thank you for a free flow of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, let the word fall on good ground. Let it go down deep in our spirit. Matter of fact, let it convict us so that we will repent and change our ways. And for your word, we say thank you. We praise you and glorify you for it challenging us to go higher. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. I feel him in here, saints. I feel him this morning, and y'all better work with me now. I'm, a, I'm trying to stick with this time thing, but I feel his presence in this place. And uh, Job 23, and we're going to look at verse 6. I'm reading the Amplified Bible. It says, uh, would he plead against me with his great power? No, he would give heed to me. There the righteous one who is upright and in right standing with God could reason with him. So I should be acquitted <clears throat> by my judge forever. Behold, I go forward to the east, but he is not there. I go backwards and to the west, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand and to the north where he works, I seek him, but I cannot behold him. He turns himself to the right hand and to the south, but I cannot see him. But he knows the way that I take. He has concern for it. He appreciates and pays attention to it. And we, when he has tried me and tested me, I shall come forth as pure, refined gold. Uh, I want to finish a message that we started in March. Uh, that the, the actual the streaming went down that day, so I want to finish a message we started in the month of March entitled "I'm going to be better after this." I'm going to be better. This is part two. I'm going to be better after this. Uh, now, in in order to really understand this text, uh, I would have to refer back to uh, Job chapters one and two. And I'm going to have to explain some of the things that were happening in Job's life at that time. And in Job chapter 1 and verse 14, Job's oxen were out in the field plowing with his donkeys. And he was feeding them beside them. And, and the Sabians, the Bible said, swooped in. And they came out of nowhere. And they took away Job's animals. And they killed some of his servants. And then right after this tragedy right here, lightning came down and burned up Job's sheep and some of his servants. And then right after this, uh, three of the Chaldeans attacked. And, and, and when they attacked, they took away Job's camels and they killed even more of his servants. And then shortly after this event, Job's daughters and sons they went over to their oldest brother's house. They were just in there fellowshipping, and a tornado hit. And when the tornado hit, it destroyed all four corners of the building. And needless to say that when the building fell down on the young people, it killed the young people instantly. Now, saints, how many of y'all know that that's a lot of back-to-back -back tragedies? You, you don't try don't try to be don't try to back up on that's a lot of back to back I know you're strong and all that but that's some a lot of back to back tragedy happening right there yeah 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 come on say that's a lot of tragedy right there yeah yeah that's a lot of tragedy right there 
But, but now this is the confusing part to me. This, this confused. After all this back-to-back -back tragedy hit, Job did not murmur, neither did he complain, Brother Dave. He didn't murmur or complain about it. But the Bible said in Job chapter 1, verse 20, that he tore his robe and he shaved his head and he fell down on the ground and started worshiping God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He started. And, and when I saw that, I said, Lord, I said, hold on now, hold on, hold on. In my flesh now. How many of y'all got, you know we got to deal with this flesh. In my flesh now, in my flesh, I, I said, now, I ain't going down on the ground and start worshiping God. I, I ain't thinking about no worshiping God. Uh, uh, because I'm mad, God. I'm mad at you. I'm bitter with you. I'm mad at you right now because I'm disappointed with you. Because I'm confused about all this bad stuff you letting happen in my life. And I don't understand why you allowed them to steal my camels. I ain't never stole from nobody, but yet you letting them come steal from me. I shouldn't be reaping that because I haven't sold that. And, uh, and, and, and Lord, I, I don't understand why you allowed my sheep to get consumed by lightning. And lightning hardly even ever happens and then you let it strike my animals. And I don't understand why you allowed my servants to be killed. They won't bothering nobody. They were just out in the field doing what I asked them to do and yet you let them get killed. And Father, I definitely don't understand why you allowed a tornado to hit the house and kill my children. Lord, I, I can't get with that. I, how am I going to worship you when you allow that to happen? They won't doing anything but sitting in the house fellowshipping. But I need to ask you a question today. I want you to be honest with me too. Uh, how many of y'all ever experienced a time in your life where you won't doing anything wrong? I mean, you were doing right as best you know how, but yet trouble still came looking for you. You won't bother nobody, won't deal with nobody, won't mess it with nobody, but trouble still came looking for me. Yeah, yeah, type on the screen, Pastor, trouble was looking for me this week. Yeah, it was looking, I don't know about y'all, I've been through some trouble this weekday. It came looking, I didn't go looking for trouble, but trouble came looking for me. Listen, I was studying my Bible, but trouble still came looking for me. I, I was speaking the word, Dave, and trouble still came looking for me. Uh, I, I, I was praying, I was paying my tithes faithfully, but trouble still is a hedge around about me, but trouble still came looking for me. But, but, but I want to encourage somebody today. I want, I want to encourage those of you who've been dealing with trouble this week. The Lord said, I will be with you in the trouble. Oh God, I feel something, babe. He said, I'll be with you in the trouble. And then he said, I'll deliver you out of the trouble. So God is with you both ways. He in the trouble with you. He helped you get out of the trouble. Oh God, I'm starting too early. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm starting too early. Yeah, yeah. But let me let me show you something in the scriptures about trouble. About trouble. Uh, the Bible, they're going to put it on screen. Psalms 46 and 1 in the New Living Translation. The Bible said, God said, it said, God is our refuge and strength and an ever-present help. In he didn't, when the trouble, the old saints used to say, when trouble come in the front door, Jesus don't run out the back door. He's an ever-present help. But that's good to know right there. And when I'm in times of trouble, Psalms 34 and verse 17 in the New Living Translation says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. It didn't say he turned a deaf ear. It said he hears them and he delivers them from all their troubles. Not, he don't deliver you from one thing and then leave the other thing. But they say all their troubles. He delivered them from all this. Some of you saying, but pastor, I hear what you're saying. But what about, what about if it's certain people who keep bringing trouble in my life? How many of y'all got certain people that just keep bringing trouble in your life? And and it, it, it's some certain people. What about that, Pastor? Well, the Bible said in Proverbs 11 and verse 8 in the New Living Translation, it said the godly are rescued from trouble and it falls on the wicked instead. Oh, God. He, he said it falls on them and said, listen, the Bible said that God is getting ready to rescue you from the trouble that those people are causing you. And he said that everything they try to do to you it's going to fall on them 
instead. Oh God, that's what the Bible said. It said going to fall on them. Uh, 2 Peter 2 and 13 in the message said, their evil will boomerang on them. Good God Almighty. Oh you know, when you throw that boomerang, that thing come back at you. Yeah, they spoke evil against you, but it come back at them. They gossiped against you, but it come back at them. They try to sow bad seeds in your life, but it come back at them. They try to slander your name, but the slander come back at them. Yeah, yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, watch out for the boomerang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If those of you watching Facebook, say, watch out for the boomerang. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. You better watch out for the boomerang. Now, let's get, back to, let's get back to Job. I want to talk about Job's reaction to bad news. I mean, all of us get bad news, but I want to talk about Job's reaction to the bad news. And Listen, after going through all that that he went through, the average person would have said, Lord, I'm mad with you, and from this day forward, I ain't never serving you. No more. See, y'all religious on me, but... I've been there before, day. I've been through some stuff that said, God, I'm walking away from the church. I'm walking away from this, and I'm walking away from that. I'm, I don't want to deal with that no more. I don't, I don't, I'm mad at you, God, because you let, I'm serving you. Let all this bad stuff happen to me. But guess what? Job didn't say that. Oh, God, help me. He didn't say that. Instead, Job said in chapter 1, verse 21, he said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. And he said, the Lord gave, and the Lord have taken away. And this is the key word what we miss. He said, blessed be. Oh, God. That's worship, right? He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless. Listen, when Job started worshiping God, he, it helped him put his mind in the right perspective. Oh, God, God, when he, started, when he started worshiping God. See, worship takes the focus off me and put the focus on God. Worship means to declare his worth to you, not your worth to his worth to you. Worship uh, is, is not talking about myself. It's, it's putting the emphasis on God. Yeah, 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 it's putting the emphasis on God. He started worshiping God, and then his mind was put in the right perspective. Listen, I, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but the Lord said, in the midst of your trouble, start worshiping me. I'm talking to somebody on, on, the, on the TV or something. He said, in the midst, he didn't say you won't go and do nothing, but in the midst of it, he said, start worshiping me. He said, I, I know you had unplanned death in your family, but in the midst of it, start worshiping him. I, I know the spouse walked out on you, and I know... Your fiance broke up with you unexpectedly, but God said, just start worshiping me. Yeah, yeah, I know they broke your heart. Start worshiping me. He said, because when you worship me, I give you the right perspective. Oh, God, some, you respect your, pers your perspective ain't right sometimes when all that anger and all that fury, but when you start worshiping God, you get the focus off you. Put the focus on God Come on, say, say this with me. Say, worship gives me the right perspective. Yeah, type that on the screen. Worship gives me the right perspective. Yeah, yeah. Now, you see now, listen to this. After Job finished worshiping, this is what he said about everything he had lost day after he started worshiping. He said, when I came out of my mother's womb, I didn't have any of these material possessions. And he said, and when I leave here, I can't carry any of these possessions with me. And how many of y'all know that material things are nice and it's good to have some nice things, but you can't take them with you. After, when the eternity time comes, you can't take them with when, at, when you die on this earth, you can't take it with you. Having a big house it's nice, Dave. Matter of fact, I want, a, I want a nicer house. But guess what? I can't take it with me when I pass on to the next. Uh, having a fine car is nice, but I can't take it with me, Elder Tony. I can't. Uh, uh, having tailor-made suits is nice, but I can't take it with me. 
you know, and, 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 and you know, having new dresses is nice, ladies. It's nice. I ain't gonna lie. Your nice pumps and your heels, but you can't take it with you. As the old saint said, when your numbers call, you can't take it with you. Yeah, and and listen, in First John two, verse seventeen, in the New Living Translation, it says, "The world as we know it is pa come on, Sandra, is passing away, uh, along with everything else." that people crave that's what the new living translation said but everyone that does what god what pleases god or the king james said the will of god they will live forever that's what the bible said listen all they're saying is you got to have your priorities in order your priorities got to be in order yeah 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 come on say i got my priorities in order yeah type that on the screen for i got my priorities that the car don't come before God and the suit don't come before God and the money don't come before God. If it does, your priorities are out of order. Yeah, your priorities. Now, the second thing that Job said was this. He said, as far as my loved ones are concerned, God allowed them to be in my life for a season and I enjoyed them while I had them. So either way, my declaration is that blessed be the name of the Lord. I enjoyed him while I had him. He let him transition out of this world. So either way, my declaration is blessed be the name of the Lord. In other words, Job was saying, I will bless him through the good times. Y'all come on with me. I'll bless him through the bad times. I bless him when I understand what's going on. And I bless him when I don't under I don't understand it, but I know he's worthy to be praised anyway. I bless him at all times. That's why the Bible said in Psalms 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord. Not sometimes, but all times that his praises shall continually be in my mouth. That's Praise is not a suggestion. It is a command. Somebody said, well, I just don't get down like that. Praise is not a suggestion. Praise is a commandment from the Bible. He said, at all times, God said, I wanted it. Uh, uh, come on, say, I keep a praise in my mouth. I, I keep a praise in my mouth. I'm, when I'm going through, I keep a praise in my mouth. When things ain't lining up, but I keep a praise in my mouth. I, I keep a praise in my mouth. Listen, I can't speak for you saints, but God has been good. He's been good to me, Dave. Oh, no, he, this ain't no game for me. This ain't no, this ain't no something I'm putting on for the TV. God has been good to me. He been, listen, he, he already done more for me than I imagined that I could ever do anyway. I ain't talking about since I've been on this side of faith. I'm talking about when I didn't know nothing about faith. A little boy growing up in the projects and I grew up in a center block house and then we moved to the projects after that and I thought I was moving up then coming up in utter poverty low self-esteem I didn't envision teaching nobody nothing yeah he already been better to me than I ever thought I could achieve that's why I praise him like I do you don't have to pump me up you don't have to prime me I, I didn't thank God for Pastor Adam but I don't need the keyboard to do this yeah I don't need I don't need that for that that's why I praise him like I do and back on March 11th 1990 when I got saved I promised God that I would never be too sophisticated Sam I would never be too sophisticated that I couldn't give God of praise I never get so dignified Hallelujah. one time I was I was uh, at, at a church and had a guest preacher beside me and I got on my knees and laid on the floor before God he said get up man you the preacher you ain't but I even the more need to be laying the preacher need to be worshiping even more he need to be first partaker of the worship I ain't got no suit that's so nice that I won't get on the floor day the suit just got to go to the cleaners. But I ain't got no suit too good that I won't get on my knees and tell God, thank you. I lay on my face if I have to, Sandra. I get on my knees. If It's something about being prostrate, Minister Joan. 
I know it's not so much the physical, but it reminds me when I lay before him that it's all about him and not me. It's a humbling thing, brother Lord, when I lay down on there and I didn't lay down before. That's why the Bible said prostrate. It's a reminder. It's a reminder, listen, because it's only his mercy and his grace. I think we get it twisted, babe. But it's only his mercy and his grace that I have what I have anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's only by his grace that I can stand here teaching you anything. Yeah, that's why uh, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1, Paul said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. He didn't say it was his pedigree. He didn't say because he was on the Sanhedrin council. He didn't say because he knew the law backward and forward. He didn't say because he was from the tribe of Benjamin. He said, I am what I am simply because of the grace of God, not my intellect. Oh, God, he one of the smartest men in the Bible. But it was the grace of God. Some of us need a reminder of that. Get a little house, get a little car get a little dignified. We forget it was, it was the grace of God. This word grace is the Greek word charis. They got it on the screen. And it has a twofold meaning. Number one, it means in the Greek a gift or blessing that is brought to man by Jesus. Oh God, that's why you can't get the big head because the blessings that you have were brought to you by Jesus. Can't get the big uh, then the second definition of this word grace means when God extends favor and kindness towards you. He extends favor and kindness. Listen, his grace put me in the fivefold ministry. It was not my intellect and all. It was his grace put me in there. His grace caused me to get promoted on the job. His grace, listen, his grace calls people to patronize your business. All oh, you business owners. It's the grace. It wasn't your expertise that make them patronize your business. It wasn't your skill set that make them patronize your business. There's a lot of people with a skill set. There's a lot of people that can do what you do. Don't fool yourself. There's some other good folk in the business. It's not your charm that keeps the people coming back. It's not your style or your charisma that keeps the people coming back. It's not your good looks, although you look good, babe, but it ain't your good looks that keep them coming back. It's not your swag and how big you got your chest pumped out that make the folk come back. That's not what's making them. It is the grace and the favor and the divine ability of God that makes them come to patronize your business. And if you ever get the big head, God can cut the favor and the grace from them coming to patronize all of a sudden, all of them start going elsewhere. Don't fool yourself. It's his grace. Come on, say, it's his grace and favor over my life. It's his grace and favor over my life. If you're on Facebook, you type up there, it's his grace and favor. Grace and favor. So now, Job, Job chapter 2, verse 7. Job faced another set of trials. And the Bible said that Satan smote Job with some painful, hideous sores all over his body. And they, the Bible said they extended from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And then the Bible said, it said in verse 12, that Job's face was so disfigured that his friends Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar could not almost even recognize him. Then in verse 9, it tells us that Job looked so bad that his own wife, told him to renounce his integrity and then curse God and die. But Job said in verse 10, woman, you speak as one of the foolish women speak. He said, then he said, when good things come our way, we receive that from God. But so when some adversity hits my life, you think I'm going to curse my God? It's not going to happen. Somebody says it's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Listen to me, saints. Adversity hits all of us during this lifetime. If you say, well, pastor, I ain't never had no ever. Well, keep on having birthday. Thank you, Sam. Keep on living. 
After a while, that adversity is coming your way. But it's how we deal with the adversity that makes the difference. That's what makes it. That's why the Bible said in Proverbs 24 and 10, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Folk do a lot of bragging on Facebook, Minister Joe. They do a lot of bragging on how deep and how strong, but the adversity always going to tell the real story. <sighs> the adversity is going to tell it. Adversity going to... But listen, but I declare over the people of God today that we don't faint in the day of adversity. We don't give up and throw in the towel in the day of adversity. Why? Because when we grow weary, God renews our strength like the eagle. That's what Isaiah said. He said, when I grow weary, he renew my strength. That's what the Bible says. And, and listen, and let, check this out. And even when I fall, because I made a dumb mistake. How many of y'all ever made a dumb? I, I, when I made a dumb mistake, don't count me out. And don't make fun of me either. Don't count me out. And don't make fun of me. That's why the Bible said in Micah chapter 7 and verse 8, he said, do not gloat over me, my enemies. In other words, don't be happy because I had a downfall. Don't you be rejoicing too quick because I missed them all. He said, because though I fall, I will arise again. That's what the New Living said. Uh, the King James said, when I fall, I shall arise. The Bible said, I will rise again. And he said, though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but the Lord said, you will rise again. Uh oh, that's a word for somebody right there. He said, you will rise again. He said, your days of being on the bottom are over. God, I'm talking to somebody. You, God said, you've been on the bottom too long. Those days are over. And God, and listen, and then God told me to talk to a specific group of people, right? I'm going to talk to some mothers and some parents right now. This is going to bless you right here. This is what God told me to tell you. He said, some of you parents have been feeling like a failure for some time now. He said, because, because of the path that your children have taken. But the Lord told me to tell you that you are not a failure. He said, it's, he said, it's just that the enemy took you through some things to convince you that you was a failure. God said, I never told you you was a failure, but that deceiver is the one that told you you was a failure. He said, I didn't tell you that. And the Lord said, this is your day. Dave, I feel it. He said, this is your day to rise up again. This is your day to get off the bottom. This is your day to rise up. And he said, I am removing that dark cloud of depression that's been hoovering. Some of y'all smiling at me and you walk in the church, but you've been just as depressed as all get out. But the Lord said, he brings you up, up out of that depression. He said, he said, that depression been hoovering over your life. He said, and the light of my glory is about to shine through. I know I'm talking to somebody. He said, the light of his glory getting ready to shine through over your life in the name of Jesus. You better receive that word right there. The light of his glory. I'm talking to somebody. Glory be to God. The light of his glory get ready to shine through on your life. Somebody need to say, I received that word. Type on the screen, I received that word right there. The, God said, the light of his glory. When his glory show up, everything that's not like him got to go there. Oh, God, I'm supposed to be teaching, but something done kicked in. Uh, uh, listen, listen. Now, let me, let, me, let, me, let me hurry up get through this. Uh, turn back to Job chapter 23. I know that was some, that's for somebody. God just chained my whole last night. Uh, oh, I'm going to get it out, Dave. I'm going to get it out in a minute. Job chapter 23. Before we close out, I want to share something with you all. Some of you, are going through some situations right now that you simply don't understand. And if the truth be told, some of you feel like God is not even with you anymore. But after, 
after we read Job's response to his adversity, it's going to change your life forever. Job said in verse 8 and 9, when I go forward to the east, it seems that God's presence is not there. He said, when I go opposite direction to the west, his presence is not there. In verse 10, he said, when I look to my left towards the north, I'm seeking him, but I can't find him. And then he said, and when I turn right towards the south, I still don't sense God's presence with me anymore. And then he said, and no matter what direction I go in, I just don't see God moving. God, I wish I had some honest folk. I just don't see God moving in my life anymore. And I got a question for you, saints. I got a question. I need y'all to be honest. How many of y'all ever been in a place where it seems that God is just not moving anymore? It seems like he ain't moving. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And it seems that he is not moving. I fasted. I went on a 30-day fast. I did an absolute fast where I just did water. I did a partial fast where I did no pleasant bread. I did all kind of fasting, but it still don't seem where, like I see him moving in my life. And, and even though I made my Bible confessions daily, I haven't seen God move just yet in my life. But pastor, I ain't just ready. I'm past ready for God to move in my, I'm past ready to see him move. So type on the screen, I'm past ready to see God move. I've been ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, saints, if you're truly ready to see God move, you're going to have to change your perspective, just like Job did. We always talk about Job, but Job changed his perspective. You see, in Job chapter 23, verses 1 through 9, Job was talking about all the hell that he had been through. But then in verse 10, Job changed his perspective. And he said, but he knoweth the way that I take. That is a powerful sentence. I wish you would go home and study that in the Hebrew. He said, I, he know the way that I take. This, this word way in the Hebrew means the road I'm on or the journey that I'm on. God know the road that you're on and he know the journey that you're on. In other words, Job was saying, even though I've lost some material possessions, he knows exactly where I am. And even though I've lost some loved ones and they died prematurely, but he knows exactly where I am. And even though I don't feel his presence at the moment, he knows exactly. I ain't lost from God, from God. He knows exactly where I am. Uh, that's why Job said in chapter 34, verse 21, he said, for his eyes are upon the ways of a man, and he sees all his steps. God see all our steps. Our missteps, our right steps, our wrong. He see all our steps. And, and he, listen, in Job 36 and 7, he said that he does not take his eyes off the right. Come on, minister Job. He said, I don't. I, I see everything that the righteous are doing. We well, said, who is the righteous? Those that have been declared righteous by the blood of Jesus. Not your righteousness. It was the blood that put you in right standing. And he said, if the blood put you in right standing, he said, I see you. You never lost before him. He knows exactly. Type on the screen. He knows exactly where I am. He knows exactly where I am. And listen to me right here. This is going this to this this hit, hit you right here. Everything that you're facing right now is just a test that God sovereignly allowed. The devil can't do nothing unless God permitted for everything you're going through right now is a test that God sovereignly allowed. And that's why Job said in verse 10, but when he has finished testing me, Y'all got to study this thing. He said, when he, when, he, when he finished testing me and trying me, I shall come forth. See, we want to go forth as pure gold without the testing part, day. We want to be in the trophy case, but without the testing part. We want everybody calling our name and celebrating us, but we don't want the testing part. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, he said, when he has finished testing and trying me, I shall come forth as purifying gold. Listen, you're going to, I told y'all last time, you're going to see a better version of Pastor Dennis Parker after this test. Yeah, and you're about to see Pastor Parker 2.0. And you should say the same thing in your own life. Come on, say, I'm going to be better after this test. I'm going to be better after this test. Some of y'all scared to say the word test, but you know that's what you're going to. And the Lord showed me that there are three different tests that you're going to have to pass to become a better version of yourself. The Lord told me to be specific. I'm going to hit y'all specific because I ain't got a whole lot of time. He says three tests you're going to have to pass in order to become a better version of yourself. Number one, he said you're going to have to pass the temperance test. Damn. Oh God, the temperance test. Somebody say temperance. The temperance test. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 6 teaches us that even though a Christian may be walking in virtue, he may be walking in biblical knowledge. She may be walking in godliness. It says that temperance is the last piece that you got to add to your life. You got to add temperance to your life. Galatians 5 and 23 tells us that temperance is one of the nine fruits of the spirit. And, and, and when the Bible said that a person lacks temperance, that means that you are a person who lacks self-control. It, it, mean, it means you are a person who is given to outburst. Even in the public, you're given to an outburst. It don't take much for the cashier to push your button and the cuss words start to coming out. Yet, you are a Christian. I'm talking to the Christian folk now. Uh-huh, uh-huh. A, a, a person who lacks temperance is a person that goes off over every little matter. I'm talking about somebody today, but it ain't me. It's the Holy Ghost talking about you. He, 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 he go off over any little thing. Now, I don't know who I'm talking about, but the Lord said he's not taking you any further in life until you pass the temperance test. Oh, I wish I had a uh, whole church full of folk that believe the word he, he said he ain't taking you no further until you pass the temperance test he said because every time you lose your temper you are causing people to stumble especially those that don't know me he said and your outburst and your lack of self control are pushing people further from me so every time somebody got a prophetic see there was a new house Y'all will be jumping up and down, but when I tell you what thus said the Lord that matched the scriptures. This right here matched the scriptures. I ain't make this up. Pushing people further away from me. Proverbs 25 and 28 teaches that God expects us to have a rule over our own spirit. Rule over our own spirit. But they just pushing my buttons. They just making me go off. No, you're supposed to have control over your own spirit and your attitude. They can't push you no further than you let them push you. And as mature Christians, we can't keep going off over every little thing. We can't keep yelling at our children over every little. Man, they drop a little drop of water on the sink. I told you about dropping the water. Come on. A, a drop of water. The shoes supposed to be on the left. They left them on the right. You're going off. It's getting quiet this Holy Ghost Church. You can't keep going off over every little thing. We can't keep having these uncontrolled outbursts in the Target and in the Walmart. You know it's bad when a Christian go in the Target and the Walmart and the people see you come, they'll be like, oh, I don't want to wait on her. I don't want to wait on her. You know, that's a bad testimony, Dave. As for believer. Come on, say, I got to pass the temperance test. 
I noticed what the Holy Ghost gave me. Uh, Y'all might not be excited, but this I'm still in the Word right now. I'm still in the Word. The second test you're going to have to pass is the faith test. Some of you have been walking with God too long not to trust Him. Oh, boy. God asked Moses in Numbers chapter 14, verse 11 in the Good News. He asked Moses, he said, how much longer? Will they refuse to trust in me even though I have performed so many signs and miracles in their life? Oh, God, help me, Jesus. And the Lord told me to ask somebody. He said, he said, how many times do I have to bless you and provide for you before you believe on me? How many times do I have to do it before you will finally believe? Your credit was jacked up, but I still let you get the car. You didn't have the money, but I still let you get the house. How many times do I got to bless and provide before you will believe? How many times, God said, do he have to pay the phone bill before you believe he's able? You can't believe God for $30 yet and been serving him for 50 years. How many times do he have to remove the cancer from your breast and the cancer from your, your, your organs and all that before you believe that he's a healer? The doctor said it has spread all the way up here, but then it came back and checked and the cancer was gone and you still don't believe. You got a head cold and you're about to curse God. Your allergies acting up but he healed you from cancer. Yes, he said, didn't I tell you in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by faith and, and not by sight. You walk by faith and not by sight. That is the way of the believer. Hebrews 11 and verse 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Verse 6, that he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligent. When are you going to believe the word? He said, after serving me many years, it's time for you to pass the faith test now, baby. Come on, say, I'm passing the faith test this time. I'm passing it this time. I refuse to keep walking in doubt. And unbelief. Come on, I like that word right there. I felt that when she said that day. I refuse. See, you waiting on God to do it, but you got to make up your mind and say, I refuse. I, I refuse to keep walking in doubt and unbelief. I refuse to keep staying up night after night worrying. He said he already got it. He said he already took care of it, but I'm still up every night worrying and biting my fingernails. I refuse to do that anymore. I refuse to spend every day murmuring and complaining. I refuse to do it. But I make a conscious decision. I don't need to have a feeling for this. I make a conscious decision that I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. And from here on out, I'm going to believe your word. Make a con The last test you're going to have to pass is the humility test. Help me, Lord Jesus. Don't turn away on the dial now. Don't, don't turn off the dial now, baby. The humility test. Somebody say humility. Some of you have been operating in pride for too long. And you've forgotten that Proverbs 6 teaches us that God, he don't even like a proud look. Don't even look like you're about to be proud. And the reason you have not become a better version of yourself yet is because your pride is hindering the progress. Your pride is hindering the progress and the process. James 4 and 6 says, Therefore God resists the proud. He resists the proud but he shows grace and favor to the humble. God resists the proud. Prideful people 
think that they are better than others. Unfortunately, that spirit is in some churches too. Think that you're better than somebody else. Prideful people are arrogant and conceited. And they're condescending. They make little comments that make you try to make you feel a little lower. So they'll feel a little higher about themselves. I know what I'm talking about. They take prideful people take every opportunity to make other folk look small. But here's one that Christian folk don't pick up on sometimes. Prideful people won't ask for help. Because they worry so much about their image and what people will think. About they know they ain't got no groceries, and there are ten people right there that will buy them the groceries, but they won't ask, they'd rather go hungry because I gotta protect my image. And when God sees that attitude in his children, he stops you from moving forward in your life. Listen, and when God resists you. And he said, the devil, I said, when God resists you, you can't fight against City Hall, baby. You ain't going nowhere. When God, when God resists you, you ain't, going no, you ain't making no progress. When God resists you, you can't inherit no blessings. When God resists you, you cannot become a better version of yourself. And the Lord is saying, it's time for you to humble yourself, beloved. I'm talking to somebody on no matter what. It's time for you to humble yourself. For God said, for didn't I say in 1 Peter 5 and 6 that if you would humble yourself under my mighty hand that I would exalt you in due season, saith the Lord. And, and the Lord, this is what the Lord told me to tell you. He said, he said, son, tell him now is your due season. Oh God, God, God. He said, now, he said, not 2021, not th 2022. He said, now, come on, Mr. Joe, yeah, now is your due season. Now, and, and, and listen, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to reap everything. Somebody say everything. I'm ready to reap everything the Lord said that I could have. But therefore, listen, therefore, I got to pass these tests. Because, in, see, God don't believe in social promotion. In God's kingdom, you keep going around the same circle over and over again until you pass the test. He don't just push you on to the next grade. In, in school, if they get tired of you, you're in the third grade, they go ahead and push you on to the fourth. But God's kingdom don't operate like that. You just got to keep circling the same mountain over and over again until you pass the test. But you need to have in your mind that failure is no longer an option for me. And, and, and therefore, I declare that my temper is going to get better this year. My attitude, I ain't going to wait for you to help. I, my attitude, I declare that my attitude is going to get better this year. I declare that my faith is growing leaps and bounds. And I can't wait to Sunday to I see that. I got to get in the Word every day. I got to pray every day. I got to stand on it every day. So by the time Sunday come around, he just boosting my faith a little higher. My faith is growing leaps and brown. And whatever God's word says about my situation. Didn't say you didn't have a situation. But whatever it says about my situation, I believe the word. Whose report? Come on, I feel that thing. Whose report are you going to believe today? That is the question. And finally, I declare that I'm walking in humility. I don't let God, God ain't got to pull the rug from under me before I learn. I, I humble my own self under the mighty hand of God. If God got to humble you, oh God, yeah, I, I'd rather do it. But I do it because, listen, pride has no more place in my life. Arrogance has no more place in my life. Conceitedness has no more place in my life. Why, Pastor? Because after I pass these tests, I'm going to be a better version of myself. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Throw me away you want to. Count me out you want. You'll get ready to see a better version, a more godly version, 
a, a more holy living version, a more faith-filled version, yeah, a more loving people version. That's the version you're about to see. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Listen, those of you who say, listen, Pastor. You say, listen, I'm, I'm ready to pass these tests. I want you to stand. Those of you watching the restream, the, 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 the Facebook, you stand right there in your living room. You stand right there in your living room. I'm ready to pass these tests. I ain't going around the same mountain. Not another year. I ain't going around the same mountain. I'm ready to pass these tests right here. Glory to God. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, right now in Jesus' name, we thank you that you're helping us to look at ourselves and not just look at others. And everything you taught through the man of God today, some of it hit me. Some of it convicted me. But that's good because that let me know I'm saved and I'm born again. Because I feel the conviction of the Holy Ghost. And I'm ready to grow in the things of God. I'm ready to grow. I'm tired of standing still. I'm tired of not making no progress. But Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you I'm passing the humility test. I'm passing the temperance test. I'm passing the faith test because I'm ready to go higher. I don't want to stay a babe in Christ no longer in this area of my life in the name of Jesus. Thank you for helping me develop in my love walk, God. Thank you for helping me develop in my humility walk. Thank you for taking me through what you had to take me through that I would start developing in these areas and so father going forward we declare God that we're going to have a better attitude we declare that we have a better perspective on life we declare that we're going to be more thankful for the things you've already done we declare that we will not murmur and complain we declare God that we're going to trust you when we can't trace you you've proven yourself time and time again, we declare that we are trusting you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for changing us today, for challenging us today. In Jesus' name, amen.